Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, episode number 36. They all start dancing lambada on my songs. So me, I'm like, all right, this is the way you dance, this is the way you dance. I'm singing my song. And then in front, there's three Angolans, probably <laughs> students, <laughs> that are yelling. <laughs> and I'm like, what's wrong with this guy? Why are they yelling in my show? It's like, and they're angry. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? And they're like, this is not the way you dance it. This is not the way you dance. And I was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let the people have fun. We're in Brazil. That's the way they dance it. Don't be a dictator with art. safe no more we gotta do something let's go i'm talking about this girl she she's taking over i must surrender she's been making a fool of me and she would do the same to you you uh, trust me i don't give her your heart let's go Welcome to the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast, the podcast dedicated to inspiring dancers worldwide whose hearts have been touched by music and dance. The universal language of dance and music is spoken by many of us throughout the world. We want to motivate the dancer in you by sharing stories, insights, and ideas to enhance your journey. Join us now with your host, Charles Ogar. Hello, hello everyone. This is Charles with the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast. And I'm really, really, really excited to have our special guest here with us today. Um, this will be the second podcast of 2017. We have none other than Kaisha himself on the line. How are you doing today? I believe that's me. Hello. Um, so I feel I, sh I should probably preface this with some of our newer listeners. So if you're newer to Kizomba, you've probably seen Kaisha on your Kizomba playlist on SoundCloud or YouTube or somewhere like that. But Kaisha has been very influential in the genre of quote unquote ghetto zook um, music from that spans back to like late 90s, early 2000s. But we have Kaisha here on the line to kind of give us his perspective and it's really, really exciting. I'm, I'm kind of having a little tingle in my body because he's been around for such a long time that I'm really excited to kind of pick his brain of what was, what is, and like the trends that he's seeing as well. And uh, you're also pretty active on social media than other artists as well. So I'm curious to pick your brain, your brain as far as that. And um, so for our listeners, now who may not have heard of you can you go ahead and give us a little snapshot of what your life is like today uh, today um i'm retired <laughs> yeah, well no today uh well um when when uh, i do interviews and people ask me to introduce myself i usually say that um i'm a rapper i'm a singer I'm a beat maker, I do cooking, and I'm a porn star. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but that's for fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an in entrepreneur, um, and um, I do music in general. I, I don't I understand that people need to put uh, names on genres mm -hmm. to, to define uh, in their head and and but um i believe in freedom and uh i think that once somebody calls you uh, ghetto zook or zook or kizomba they limit you mm. to to the things that they think you are but uh if you listen to my music between 96 and uh 2016 which is 20 years I went yeah I went from um, hip hop R&B Zook Candy Zook Ghetto Zook Zook R&B uh, Kizomba Urban Kizomba 
uh, future Kizamba, <laughs> and I don't even count the names that I invented every time I was like, oh, this is a new style, like, let's go. Today. Because um, music is not, it's just like dance. It's a moving target. Like, it's just like dance. Can you say that salsa that is dancing in, in Uruguay and salsa that is dance in uh, Portugal and salsa that is dance in France and salsa that is dancing in Cuba are the same? No, because every time that there's a new dancer, there's a variation. There's a little small, very small uh, mutation. Just like two people meet, they make a baby, there's a mix of the two. Mm -hmm. If those two people happen to be black, then there's a new black baby. But if one of these people is black and the other one is blonde with blue eyes, then the baby that is coming will be either caramel or milky chocolate or something in the middle. And then you have a new genre. But even when the people are two black people, the baby might, might have a feature from one of the two and not it is it, it's always something that is moving and uh, dancing is the same thing when you learn something when you learn to dance uh, you always gonna if if, you, if you're not a dancer of course you will go by the book you will dance like your instructor but then if you were a hip-hop dancer before being a kizomba dancer you might add a little bit of hip hop in your kizomba. And what happened, for example, for the urban kizomba is that uh, once kizomba became popular, a lot of hip hop dancers were like, mm, interesting, let me dive there. And they put a little bit of hip hop inside of their kizomba. And then all of a sudden it became urban keys. I'm, si I'm, it's, I'm simplifying, but yes, for sure. it's just, uh, a different take on something that came from something else before. So, um, I I'm think pretty that, sure you've uh, seen this process happen. It's like a cycle that keeps happening. One million over times. And over. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, be, uh, my mentor, uh, the first, one of the first thing he taught me, uh, back in South America when I was living there, uh, cause I lived around the world. Um, one thing he told me was that music, dance, and arts, so genres, are they have a, an apogee when they are rising. Then they have uh, the moment where they are successful. Then they have, so the rise, the apogee, then they have this moment of, you know, like the, when you reach the altitude, like the plane, when it stops taking off, then you have the, 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 the croisière. And then there's a moment when it starts going down because it's going to land and because it's, it's time to, to pass to the next generation or it's time to, or people are tired or just things are moving, things are changing. There's new influences. And um, I think it's the same for everything. Definitely. And music... Music, art, dance, painting, we have different genres that feed from each other. And this is, this is why uh, when you are an artist that do just one song and you last for you know, a year or two and you have this big hit and then everybody forgets you, you can categorize somebody to Zouk artist or Kizomba artist or whatever. But if your career lasts 20 years, you're going to try a lot of things. Yeah, definitely. If, if not, you're bored and you're boring. That so makes a lot of sense. I, yeah, so I don't have a definition. Awesomeness, awesomeness. I like that answer because, I mean, it's with us here in the U.S., it's still very new. So obviously there's a lot of history behind Ghetto Zouk, Kizomba, Zouk Love, R&B, Kizomba, Semba, Angola, all the pop countries and things like that. And we're learning as we go. And this is why we have this podcast, because I want to kind of mm -hmm. expose our listeners to different pieces of the puzzle, you know, um, of so course. They have an understanding of what was and what how that came to what we have today, you know. That's something that is very interesting because 
I hear a lot of people who who came from nowhere and they they come with the the, the stone of the Ten Commandments of Kizamba. <laughs> and they arrive like, yeah, it is this, it was invented by us and whatever. And that's crazy to hear that. Um, to give you an example, six years ago, Angolans were not doing Kizamba at all. A, a Kizambada, which is where the term comes from, was the name of a party. So I'm talking about like 15 years ago. It was the term of a party where people were going to listen to Zouk artists and Zouk music. And once, so people were trying to dance Zouk because they were seeing this at, on, on the TV. And of course, like I said, once it reached a new country, then you have new steps that are added. And that's how they start doing their dance but at the same time the Cap Virgins were listening to Kassav which is the group that invented Zouk and they were dancing in Cap Verde their version of Zouk and they called it Pasada exactly at the same time groups like so you had groups like Splash in Cap Verde that were trying to mimic Kassav. So I'm not inventing what I'm saying. I talked to the actual guys. No, we, we, uh, I interviewed Johnny Ramos and he told me about yeah, Ulas right. and, and Splash. Exactly. And song. Uh -huh. so, and so all these group were trying to do Zouk. And of course, when you are copying something that you heard from another country from 8,000 kilometers away, you, you tend to add your own flavor to it which is normal. In the beginning, you just mimic, and once you get a, a, a hold of it and a hang of it, you start adding your own, your own stuff. And that's how the Cap Virgins start, started having Passada. Same Passada that the French would call Cabo Zouk, as Cap Virgin Zouk, because the French tend to want to appropriate everything. Well, the French and the Angolans, they try to like, it's us, it's ours. But mm -hmm. I think it's belonged to everybody. But let me continue. Yes, sir. Uh, then you had the Capvergens doing the Passada. At the same time, you had the people from Guinea. And so uh, one of, um, one of the, 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 the first Zouk artists from uh, Guinea-Bissau is the uncle from uh, the mother of my first child. So I, I had it from the source. Wow. He explained to me how, the, so the, 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 the other word famous, Tabanka Jazz. Yeah. Boy, I see him. They have exactly. a couple of awesome so, songs. Uh -huh. So Mika, who is my uncle by Allianz, explained to me that back in the days, I'm talking about the end of the 80s, they were going to parties in Guinea to sing Kassav songs. And so they sing Kassav songs and stuff and everybody's coming to their shows to listen to Kassav songs because nobody has enough money to hire the real group. So you have, yeah, you know, people that are trying. Yeah, definitely. And they're here and they're, they're quite successful. And one day after a bunch of shows, they feel like, hey, let's do one original song in the middle of the show. And that's how their style was born. So they start with something that they're impersonating, and one day they do one song, it becomes a hit, and Tabanka Jazz now become their own group and they start doing their own songs. So that's Guinea-Bissau. At the same time, uh, in Angola, you have the Yuri Dacunas, you have the the uh, the father of Kizomba there, Eduardo uh, Paim, Eduardo Paim, who actually is a Congolese who flew the war uh, in Congo in '86 and arrived in Angola, and he came back with yeah Kassav in his heart because all the Africans grew up listening to Kassav, so him too 
is the winzuk in the kizombadas, which is just a term for parties. Yes. And then in the kizombadas, yeah, they, you know, one, two, one, two. So one day somebody do one, two, three, and boom. This is the kizomba dance, Angolan style, that is now uh, existing. And at the same time, in the West Indies, you got cassav, which mm -hmm. is, uh, to me, the, the root of the tree uh, of Zouk. Because before them, you had mazurka, you had calypso, you had merengue, you have dancehall, mm -hmm. and all Soka. these exoka. And what is kizomba? It's just slow down soka. So what was what was um, cassav doing? They were back in the days doing, you know, funk like everybody else, trying to, to copy James Brown like everybody else. But they hear in the neighboring islands the sounds. So I'm not inventing because Jacob is one of my, like, uh, mentor, Jacob de Value from Kassav. So he explains to me, we went to Africa, we went to... to um, to all around Africa to perform. We went to the, the neighboring islands and yeah, we were hearing all these different uh, genres and we were listening to the music from the West Indies too because, in, and, and from Haiti, where in Haiti there were, you know, it's an island that is, uh, they share an island with Dominica. And so they had too their own compact groove that was, that was going on. And now you have Kompa in Haiti, Zouk in the West Indies, Pasada in uh, Cap Verde, Kizomba in Angola, and all these dances, so the, the, the Zouk is more one, two, one, two, the Kompa is uh -huh. like the Zouk, one, two, one, two, but then the Pasada and Kizomba, the Palop versions are more probably inspired by Salsa, are more one, two, three. And all these styles are growing in their own respective uh, lanes without knowing about each other. It's interesting that you say salsa because I know that Cuba was very influential in the Angolan independence. And of, of course, course there's be some, and, some overlap and in culture rock. and music and dance there. Exactly. But listen, even, even like when the communists uh, uh, arrive in, in Congo, arrive in, in all these places, even, even Angola, they brought their music. Because I remember growing up, I remember at eight, my father is listening to Celia Cruz and Cassava at home. That's how I got influenced by Latin music because I, I kept hearing. Oh, wait, wait, uh, wait, wait. Dad, so you said your dad mm -hmm. was listening to Cassava and Celia Cruz. Of course. That's awesome. My dad, my dad was listening to Cassava and Celia Cruz all the time at the house. And my mom, when it was her turn, to, 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 to control the music was playing uh, Sheila E. Prince and Michael Jackson. I love it. And, and Imagination and all these guys. So that's how I got, I started, you know, being in all these when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm eight. And at the same time, I'm also listening to Congolese music, which strangely is called rumba. <laughs> and that we dance exactly like in, in, in Cuba. So at a point when my, when my, so back in 74, I think 75, my dad organized the Ali Foreman, uh, well, he was part of the organization that organized the Ali versus uh, Foreman Rumble in the Jungle boxing match. And back then, everybody has, uh, you know, those uh, elephant pants and afros and because we are all of course uh, the influence of america and the the, the american influence and, and even the, the islands like the puerto rico and all these places is strong also in africa and then the cassav go there they get this influence they take it to the west indies and then everybody take from all their islands and now you have the next generation Everybody that grew up listening to Splash becomes the Johnny Ramos, the Mika Mendes, Nelson Freitas. And at the same time, they also have their influences from being the second generation of immigrants. 
Exactly. So, uh, the Nelson Freitas, they were listening to R and B and stuff, but from and stuff from the, the Holland. People like me, we grew up listening to European pop, like Ah uh-uh, Ah, like uh, you know Duran Duran, uh-huh. uh, George Michael, rest in peace, Prince Michael Jackson, uh, and we were all doing hip hop back then. And this was the lane where we were trying to compete. And uh, the people that grew up uh, listening to Katabanka jazz in Guinea, then you have a second generation and like the, the genre starts, you know, getting mature everywhere. And back then there's no internet. So exactly. everybody is just going straight to their own thing. And back in Angola, everybody was into hip hop. Everybody was in hip hop and more a, a kind of reggaeton that was was that was like heavy C and these guys big nello that what that's what they were doing back then they were more into hip hop and reggaeton calibrados all these groups and kuduro too yes uh, uh-huh. and then uh with i think uh back in 98 when i released my first album uh this is the real uh, the first um uh, uh, the turning point for Zouk music because this is when the Zouk R&B becomes uh, so I sold I saw I made gold in France which is 100,000 copies so this is when uh, people start taking us seriously and people are starting to say okay now there's a new lane there's the traditional Zouk and then there's the Zouk R&B and of course the traditional people they hate us <laughs> the same way the same way the the, the Kizomba people uh, hate the urban Kizomba. Uh-huh. But at the same time, the Zouk people, they hate the Kizomba people <laughs> because they believe that they are the originators. You know, so it's, it's funny because every time there's someone before you, they hate that you are running away with their, like, what they think should be set in stone. But art is a moving target. It changes over time, and and today we say urban keys for uh, the kizomba that is more uh, modern and hip hop and R and B, whatever, and the music with more uh, you know off beats and stuff. But if you go to Russia, they just call it kizomba because that's all they know. And for you who've been uh, discovering kizomba uh, four years ago, maybe the way that you dance there will be the only way you know. The same way as somebody who's dancing salsa today in Caracas will see people jumping 20 meters up there and doing all these crazy stuff with their feet and think that, yeah, this is salsa. Because And somebody who's been dancing salsa for 40 years will be like, look at these crazy motherfucking kids who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> That's evolution. <laughs> And so what happened, I think that at a point, um, I think I remember that when I arrived in Portugal the first time uh, with my third album, so we're talking 2003, 2004, so that's when I released Fiona, 88 BPM, Music Warrior, uh, all these songs. This is when I arrived in Portugal, I have my first success in a Palop country, so the Portuguese country, and... Back then, Kizomba is Cap Virgin music. So we call it Kabuzuk in France, but here in Portugal, they just call it Kizomba because Kizomba is still a term for party and a dance. It's not a term for uh, the music from a, a specific country. And there's a difference between dancing Pasada and dancing Kizomba, but all the kids here, because they are mixed with Angolans, they are, you have Angolans in Portugal, you have Mozambicans, you have Guineans, and you have uh, uh, Cap Virgins. And you have, in France, the Cap Virgins, they dance Passada, and they are the ones who are making Kuduro big in France. Because in France, you don't have a lot of Angolans, you only have Cap Virgins. And to me, back then, Kuduro is an Angolan dance, it's a, it's a Cap Virgin dance, because I listened to Kuduro in Cap Virgin parties. It's only in 2005 when I reached Angola that I discovered that, oh my God, they have a, kiz, a Kuduro here that is way more advanced than what I see in France, 
where everybody's dancing on the four on four stuff, there in Angola, they're doing something that is way crazier. So I bring some of the the music from Angola and I, and I release some of it in France because I, I had my label uh, and I'm starting to try to put music out from everywhere. Then you have, um, I think in 2006, the A77, you have the arrival of Philippe Montero, who I think is very influence, influential at a point because this, it was the first Cap Virgin artist, even if he, he lived in Senegal, but he was the first Cap Virgin artist that really exploded in a way that none of them did. And uh, he had this album that uh, destroyed everything. Back then, everybody was listening to only his music. And even the, back in France, the only music we were listening to was Zouk. But then people are starting to be interested in music from Cap Verde. And after that, I think by, to tell, I think uh, back in the day, uh, Anselmo Ralph was an R&B artist living in the US. And uh, I think one day he met with Nelson Freitas and, uh, and Toot Star, who are the, and, and Johnny Ramos, of course, who were the, 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 the ghetto Zook people. And he said, oh, you know, I would like to try to sing on one of your stuff. And that's when he released a track called Undosh, yes. which became the first uh, Kizomba that really has a lot of success in Angola and here too. And uh, that's when Anselmo starts to slowly fade from an R&B artist to a Kizomba superstar and also he also does R&B, but that's when he really becomes successful outside of Angola. And that's when all the Angolan artists are like, oh my God, wow. And they all take the train of Kizomba and then they claim, oh, this is our music. This is our stuff. But I really think that this is really a joint effort by everybody. Yeah, there's like so many any, kind of factors. Like any kind of music, like you cannot say that EDM is 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 Chucky. Chucky is from is from Holland. Daft Punk is from France, uh, and now you have these guys in the U.S. They are they were the the, the last one, and not the last one because EDM is starting to what well, has started to to bang in the U.S. maybe four years ago. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. But it really like was big in in France in in whole Europe for decades. But it started in Chicago, so it's just a cycle. It's it's such a huge world of dance, and a lot of it is really like what you were saying before. If I can kind of just extract one one key aspect, it seemed like where you were born. And when you were born played a very huge factor, none of which we have control over. Exactly. And then add the internet. And now before, like, oh my internet God. wasn't uh, as big. So it was hard to see what was going on concurrently at the same time. But now exactly. we have the internet, we can see all these things. And now people are trying to are just starting to see the similarities between a lot of things, you know. But I think it's exactly. really fascinating. And, and I love what you're saying because... It just is it's such a big melting pot because here in the U.S., you tend to hear the, the equation of, oh, Kizomba equals Semba plus Zouk. And it's that is like the oversimplification. And it's not it's not accurate. You know, there's so oh, many yeah, other players and but contributions and influences. I think there's a lot of nationalism uh, and a lot of wanting to to take back Kizomba to an origin that is actually from one place when actually it comes from a lot of diverse place. I think the term is Angolan, that is true. Uh, but the dance, uh, well, you know, uh, probably has a lot to do with Angola, but it also comes from Zouk, also comes from Kampa, also comes from Haitians. If you go to Haiti, then you will listen to a lot of compa 
and they, you know, there's a, there's millions of Haitians in the U.S. Definitely. Uh, you know, and and uh, a lot of them are known for hip hop, but if you ask a lot of them what they grew up listening to, they will tell you ha- Kompa and Kasav, Kompa and Zouk, and you know, when I go to Haiti, yeah, I hear millions of Kompa songs, and uh, it's just because they are in their own world and they don't spread because maybe they are, they don't they don't use the, the internet like like we did but they have a ton of music too but uh, I, I take other examples uh you re, you remember this song uh, dembo by shada shabare <laughs> so, you know uh-huh. that's so Shabar- this song yeah this song dembo 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 pum ka pum ka pum this is the origin of reggaeton this song the sample of this song there was a guy in puerto rico that wanted to do a spanish version of dembo so they asked somebody to recreate the dembo rhythm and from this uh, version the spanish version of dembo they had a, a b-side of the vinyl and on this b-side everybody sampled the instrumental that was on the B side and everybody start jumping on this track and that's how reggaeton was born. And up to today, everybody is still using the same sample when they do reggaeton. The boom, ka, boom, ka, boom, ka, boom, ka. But if you had one rim shot, it's Kizomba. But now, imagine that now you have Major Lazer and Justin Bieber doing reggaeton, but they call it Mombaton. What was the name of it again? The Mambaton? Uh-huh. I haven't heard that one. Well, did you hear, uh, is it too late now to say sorry? Uh-huh. uh-huh. That's, that's Mambaton. But if you hear behind, it's like, katu, katu, katu. Yeah, katu. Or the other one, uh, Lean On. Yeah. From Major Laser. Yes, definitely. This, this, this is reggaeton. We dance Kizama to those songs. Oh, exactly. <laughs> now, do you see how crazy it is? We are now dancing Kizomba on Justin Bieber. We won. <laughs> Some people say, oh, they're stealing us. Me, I'm like, we won. What else you want? Like, you know, at a point, Justin or Rihanna will ask me to do a beat. I become a millionaire and buy. Or Beyonce. <laughs> oh, my God, please. Somebody hear you. <laughs> That's one of my bucket list items. I have to dance Kizomba with Beyonce. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but it's really awesome to hear your perspective and hear, like, I mean, this is really awesome to hear your 20 years of experience and how you see all the different players. That I sound like an old guy. I mean, but <laughs> it's, it's experience. And I think it's really awesome that you're on the podcast so people can hear this because you get a lot of conflicting stories sometimes. And like you said, there's a lot of nationalism and people wanted to like claim things. But at the same time, yeah. when you take a look at music, no one culture can exist without the influence of another. Just like you said, exactly. you're, you're mentioning earlier, like just um, you have like a white baby and a black baby or a mixed baby, like a culture is like that as well, you know? And all mm-hmm. of these polyp countries mixed with the West Indies, mixed with the Caribbean, mixed with the Europeans, like it's just one big puzzle of a mix of a lot of things and so if you want to like try to untangle that and see what came where and who did this and who was the owner and their first one and all that it just there's a lot of stuff that happens within the same era it is something that you can do but you have to do extensive work not just arrive with claims a lot of people come with claims like i did this i'm the father but no or yeah, we, no, it, it doesn't work like this. Uh, Let's take a quick moment to thank our sponsors. Have you been looking to level up your Kizomba, but you don't have the local instructors to take you there? Are you looking for something concrete to practice with your Kizomba partner? Or are you looking for Kizomba lessons that you can take on your schedule and the comfort of your home? If you answered yes to any of these questions, look no further. Learn to kids.com is what you need progressive step-by-step lessons that you can take at your pace in the comfort of your home or anywhere with a solid internet connection on your pc mac or any smartphone new videos are added every month you can try this awesome resource out 
30 days free at learn to kids.com slash podcast. After the 30 days free, it's only a low $15 per month. But again, the special offer for the Dance Your Heart on Fire listeners, 30 days free at learn to kids.com slash podcast. You won't find this offer anywhere else. Learn to kids.com slash podcast. And now back to our show. Somebody should actually do their homework and research. I had, I had the chance to travel my, in my life, to travel a lot and to meet a lot of people and to see generations of artists. I've, I had the luck to, to, to meet the first generation of Zouk artists. Uh, uh, I had the chance to open for Kassav. I had the chance to, to talk with them hours and hours and learn from them and listen to stories and the things they did and, how, and the way they think, uh, how they were uh, trying to preserve uh, the, 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 the Zouk sung in Creole, but not Creole from the West Indies, uh, not from the uh, Creole from uh, Cap Verde, but Creole from the French West Indies. They were really trying to preserve their culture and that's how they only, like people don't think about it, but Kassav only, they only sing in Creole because they are very, very attached to their island and they are kind of also purists. But it, the, 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 the resistance we met back then when we were doing uh, Zouk mixed with R&B sung in English, people wanted to kill us back in the days i can imagine so i i dj a little bit on the side and and sometimes Mm -hmm. i'll be djing and i'll throw like bag lady by mary j blige or like real love or something like that one time i I dj'd cupid 112 i'm not sure if you're familiar Mm -hmm. with that group of course and some people are like no this is kizama this is not kizama stuff like that but it's like if you just realize the influence of like r&b across the world you know it's like it's not that a crazy to play a, a straight up R&B track, you know? And so instead of waiting for the remix to come out, I just play the original track and it, and it, and it fits, you know? Yeah. I talked to um, a friend of mine who, who, who organized festivals of Kizomba in uh, Budapest, Hungary. Mm-hmm. So just the, like the crazy thought of it. I remember when my music was only played in the small islands of Martinique and Guadeloupe. I'm talking about like 400,000 people. And now I talk to people who organize festivals in East Europe and they play my music. How crazy is that? You know, when you think about it, how the music is the internet just spread the music all around the world Definitely. and Russia and stuff. And so she was telling me that sometimes uh, when she does a festival and uh, everybody's dancing her uh, urban Kizomba and stuff, and then she puts something a little bit more uh, traditional, if, if, if we can say, and the same people are yelling, no, that's not what we want. And, um, uh, I just think it comes with preferences of and what some people. you at the end of the day, you know? Exactly. Like when you're a dancer, you cannot force somebody to be, to be moved by something that doesn't move them. Some people will awesome. be moved by uh, EDM, for example. And... The, the 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 old head from house music will say this is not real music this is not the real house music and it's the same story the same cycle over and over again and i think that you just have to let people be free and the, you know when i do my music i i do it for myself i have a eight albums, eight solo albums. Yeah, I saw your discography before the and podcast. Plus something like 30 albums that I produced for other people and countless hits that I did for Sequat Coupé, Nelson Freitas, George, and, and 
all these guys and same thing for the in the West Indies in Guinea in, in Africa produce for a lot of people but when I do my own music I do it for myself because I'm telling my story I'm letting my emotions override the machines and come out with a song once the song is done and it is out in the world in the playlists of the people I don't have control of what they will do with the song what they will interpret or what box they'll put you in I cannot force people to interpret a sad song as a sad song they can say it is my wedding song maybe when I wrote that song I, I had suicidal thoughts but some people will interpret the way the song make them feel differently some people will say this is my sad chick song oh yeah I love to fuck on that song some people will say that's my wedding song you can't decide uh, for the people you have to let the music be free you have to let the people dance the way they want to dance because a lot of salsa people are now dancing a kizomba that looks like salsa I went to see a, a, a couple dance on a festival uh, in, in, in the like festival this, this summer mm -hmm. in Lisbon and there was this this couple they were dancing it was crazy they were doing crazy stuff and i was like wow 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 and then some person told me yeah but this is salsa this is not kizomba and i was like what do you know you start dancing two years ago shut up fuck you <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like and, and it's strange because i was i was in brazil in 2007 before all these kizomba explosion i went to brazil and in brazil they listen to kizomba they call it zouk and the dance they have has nothing to do with what we call kizomba in portugal what they and what we call zouk in france they actually dance uh Uh, Lambada. Mm -hmm. Brazilian Zouk is what we call exactly. it here in the U.S. Exactly. The name changes from a place to another. But when you go to the when you go to to Brazil, if you go to Rio de Janeiro or São Paulo, and you're gonna go to a Zouk party, and for them, they they don't. You, oh yeah, yeah. You bring them some Georgie or some Keisha or some Cassav or some Cicuatro, They will say, "Oh Zouk, I love Zouk." That's what they will tell you and they don't care and like they will hear like tac 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 and straight they will start dancing lambada and putting their hair all around what you gonna do so i arrive in my show i'm performing in uh in 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 i think it was in sao paulo brasilia i don't remember i come for my show packed And I start dance and I start like, you know, performing and stuff. And at a point, I call a few couples to dance uh, on stage. So Brazilians. And uh, they all start dancing Lambada on my songs. So me, I'm like, all right, this is the way you dance. This is the way you dance. I'm singing my song. And then in front, there's three Angolans, probably <laughs> students. <laughs> that are yelling <laughs> and I'm like what's wrong with this guy why are they yelling in my show it's like and they're angry and I'm like what's wrong with you and they're like this is not the way you dance it this is not the way you dance and I was like shut the fuck up <laughs> let the people have fun in Brazil that's the way they dance it don't be a dictator with art Because if somebody decided that the way to paint was one way, then we wouldn't have cubism, we wouldn't have aquarelle, we wouldn't have pastel, we wouldn't have all the different 
genres in art. And I think that a lot of people are, especially in these day of age, a lot of people are closed minded. A lot of people are racist. They all hate racism, but then there are racist between dancers. There are racist between uh, genres of music. Uh, you see uh, rappers insult, insulting the new the new generation of rappers who, okay, they have silly songs, that's true. But still, you know, the kids like it. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know, let people, I think there's something I, I love to say is that music is the only thing that can travel without a passport. Music doesn't know frontiers. Music just goes where it wants. You can have tomorrow Kizomba arriving in, in, in Dubai or in Morocco or Tunisia or Syria. and We have people dancing started. Kizomba in Oklahoma. Exactly. Imagine. <laughs> so they might, you know, dancing Kizomba with their cowboy hats and, and putting their own twist to it because it's normal. At a point, you need to own when you learn something. In the beginning, you listen to your instructor. And after a point, you start, when you feel confident enough, you start putting your style to it. Definitely. Because if not, there, would, there wouldn't be style and there, there wouldn't be invention if everybody was, everybody decided that there's a status quo and there we go. This is Kizomba, this is Zouk, this is R&B, this is hip hop. And it's frozen in a capsule of time. Exactly. You remember when Mary J. Blige and Joe DeCee arrived mm -hmm. in, in, in R&B and PDD arrived and everything was R&B, but it, it sounded hip hop with chords, hip hop with melodies, but all the hip hop heads were, oh, interesting. And a lot of hip hop people start enjoying R&B. And, but a lot of, of R&B singers were like, yeah, this is not real music. Yeah. It's always the same story. It is so awesome to hear. My, my face is getting tired know, I'm, from I'm smiling, so awesome. hearing you talk throughout the podcast. My cheeks are like sore right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really awesome to have you here on the podcast. Your message was freaking awesome with your experience from traveling all over the world to producing music and getting everybody's piece of the puzzle and just kind of seeing the same cycle over and over again. It belongs to everybody. Yeah, I think definitely. the puzzle, the puzzle belongs to everybody. You cannot have one piece and claim that you have the puzzle <laughs> because we come together. This is when we have something that is powerful. Division is never good. No, it is not. When, when you know, when you when you you are divided, you get swallowed by somebody. Yeah, and it's Trust really me, I come from Africa. It happens to us every day. Yeah, it's interesting how people really focus on the things that are different to divide us versus seeing the similarities. Like you were talking before, it's like you hear the difference in all the similarities in soca to reggaeton to compa to kizomba yeah. to urban kids. You see the similarities, you know, versus seeing what's different and like casting it away, you know. It is a. Uh, I think it's 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 a human feeling. You need to be with people that look like you and then fight with people that don't look like you. It's very human. And that's it like the, very, the cause the of pack, every war you know, throughout the like, history of the human race. Yeah, yeah. The human race like to be in packs of uh, like-minded people, like-colored people, or like something and, and dominate others. It's, it's really like the story of like if you if people know their history enough they will realize that the the cycle that we are in is the same that 300 years ago and 2000 years ago it's the same thing when you look like you look at the history books and you, you look at all these you know like we make heroes so now we, we're getting out of the music but we make heroes out of butchers all the time we have we are we have streets names after generals who killed millions of people. We have 
we have like our great heroes like uh, Alexander the Great, which is it enslaving people all around the world. The fuck? People are you know, naming their kids after we, him, you know. Yeah, we have we have like you are in a country where that was built on the slaughtering of the Indians. Definitely. And now you have people telling you that they're gonna make America great again and ours again when they're all immigrants. Four hundred years ago in America, they were only Indians chilling, smoking their their weed. And some Spa some Spanish people arrive and say, "Hello, my name is Christopher Columbus. This is my land. Uh, sorry, uh, you in my garden. Shut the fuck up." <laughs> So this is this is a story of the world. People I think people always need to to put their flag on 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 things and I have a completely different approach on things probably because I'm a Buddhist but uh, I tend to travel and let things soak in. I try to get richer when I meet somebody, I try to learn from them and teach them something, which is called an exchange. I know ABC, you know, you know DEF, together we are ABCDEF. That's how I think. A lot of people, they will be like, I have AB and you, are, you have R and Z and fuck you. What can we do? I love your perspective. I think it's really awesome. And I think the listeners of the podcast are really going to love your message. Um, we're getting close to the hour mark. So um, oh I just want to give you an opportunity to kind of give one final message from your experience. Um, it sounds like we could even do some follow up podcast as well, because we didn't get into like your inspiration of Sushi Raw and all this kind of things, you know. But I think this is a really good podcast um, if you'd love to be a guest on the show again, I'd love to have you. And you said somebody for, for somebody to do some extensive research. That's kind of my inspiration with the podcast. I want to interview mm -hmm. different people. I've interviewed Quinda Lima, uh, DJ Lefty here in the, mm -hmm. in the U.S., uh, Johnny Ramos. I'm trying to get Nelson Fritas on the line and say Cuatro Pedro just to kind of hear their stories, you know, and kind of, of course. put the puzzle pieces together as, as best as I can, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think... Uh, uh so the first first thing would be uh, if you have 20 days free, listen to all my music from 96 till 2016. Uh, it will actually make you travel through the different genres and the different things that I learned. I invite everybody to subscribe to my YouTube channel too, which is... Uh, yeah, Keshada TV, and uh, I'm releasing a double album in uh, in actually exactly one month on Valentine Day. I will be releasing forty new songs. Forty, wow! Yeah, yeah. I'm actually in, I'm actually mixing right now one of the songs. Um, this is a a masterpiece project. It is. Um, what I'm trying to do is just set a, put, do something new. That's something that doesn't sound like everybody else. Because I believe that in uh, every, every genre, there comes a point, like I told you about, the rise, the apogee, and the fall. I think there's always a point where music sound, starts sounding the same and that where all the singers are lacking imagination because uh, you have a few creators and then you have thousands of followers. Uh, I try sometime to push the envelope and push the, the genre and the whole industry forward. I did this a few times. I had the chance and the, the, the honor to to be on the forefront and do this a few times in my life, to do something that was defining. Um, I had a, a lot of beat makers uh, and singers look up to me at some point. And uh, this is a, a big responsibility. Um, 
and I I really think that uh, this album probably will uh, show a new direction for people and maybe some new inspiration for for younger artists. If I have some final words, uh, I would quote Buddha: "Life is like a river." We are never in the same water twice. That's awesome. I really I am I am awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the podcast. I love your perspective. I love your the insight. You know, just because you, you like the more modern sounds doesn't mean you're ignorant of the past, you know? And of course so not. That's kind of been my motivation to kind of explore more because you hear these people, like you said, with the with the stone of the Ten Commandments. And there's, there's so much we can get into. Like, if you take a look at, I'm just going to say this really quick. You can take a look at partner dancing. Partner dancing mm -hmm. is not something that originated in Africa because you take a look at Senegal, you take a look at Ghana, you take a look at Zimbabwe, you take a look at Ghana, you take a look at Ethiopia. Those guys are not partner dancing. The Palo countries partner dance, and those are the ones that have had the most exposure to the European countries, you know? So mm -hmm. some people think they're being like the most African entity sometimes when they're dancing traditional kizoma but like you said like your history has a history where did partner dancing come from you know and why you can't I th I'm sorry but i don't think you can nobody can say yeah we are the beginning because everybody everybody is a continuation of something everybody because we all have parents Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can arrive and say, oh, I'm, I'm chicken. There's no egg. Exactly. It, this doesn't work. So you can say, OK, I'm this line. But if you are this line, you also have to when you you you, you are trying to to force the respect of the people, because, you know, I talk to some people that sometimes I, I talk to uh, uh, Kizomba instructors. I actually have a video when I uh, I. I asked the same question to three on, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I have a playlist called Conversation, and I asked a few Kizamba festival organizers, uh, so what is it, what is about this, this anger between Kizamba and urban Kizamba and whatever? And they were all saying the same thing. Yeah, it's about respect. I was like, what do you mean it's about respect? No, we want them to acknowledge us. And I was like, but do you, do you even acknowledge Zouk and, and Salsa and Samba that came before you? We, I never hear you talk about uh, Zouk and whatever. I never hear you talk about Cap Verde and, and West Indies and, and Guinea-Bissau. All I hear is Angola and Kizomba. You never talk about where you came from. So how you want people to claim you all the time when you don't even claim your parents? You want your kids to say that they are your kids, but you never talk about their grandparents. So shut up and let the kids have fun, <laughs> you know? I'm going to look for those videos and put them in the show notes so people can check them out. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I think at a point, um, resistance is futile, futile. Uh, all you can do, you know, all you can do is do your thing. Uh, do uh, the things, have an opinion. Uh, something I love about, uh, for example, brands like Apple is that they have an opinion. And the opinion, when you have an opinion, it can create divergence. It can create uh, fights between people, but it is an opinion. People will like it or people will not like it, but at least you can say, I respect your opinion, but this is mine. This is what I propose. I am, I do work, I have a friend, uh, she does a Kizomba festival, and it is a Kizomba festival where you hear and dance so-called traditional Kizomba, which is, okay, uh, the Kizomba that was there when Kizomba exploded, so which is already an, a version of Kizomba, but okay, this is what we play, this is what you're gonna listen to, and she tells people, if you're not happy, don't come. And, but actually, I'm not telling you not to come, I'm telling you, if you come here, open your mind too. 
it it is like us like we are considered the third generation of zook Mm-hmm. I mean, back in the days when I was in France, that's what they were telling. Like, people call me anything. People call me Zouk, R&B, Kizomba, whatever. But yeah, back then when people were calling us the Zouk, um, the Zouk new generation, uh, we actually had a lot of respect for the people before us. And sometimes we would go to parties where they would only play all the Zouk, t- traditional Zouk. So Kassaf, Thierry Cam, Jean-Michel Rotin, uh, and, and, you know, all these guys, Jean-Claude Nemro, and, and we would love it. We would love listening to the music from the, the older people. And, but at the same time, we were doing our thing. And, you know, something I loved about Kassav, uh, and, if we, if I don't finish here, we're we gonna be here until yeah. I know. We'll do another hours, podcast. But, We're definitely gonna have to yeah, do yeah. another podcast. Yeah. So I I back in the days there were you know I I, I did a, a rap on a Zouk song. That's how everything changed in the West Indies. And so first of all, everybody was pissed off because a guy from Africa came from the West to the West Indies and changed their music. Everybody was pissed. But then I was like, didn't you all come from Africa? Why are you pissed? That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, a lot of people were saying, yeah, you are denaturating Zouk. You are, uh, you are not respecting our music. You are changing it. You are putting you R&B in it and these electronic uh, sounds in it. Uh, we are acoustic music, whatever. And so one day I went to an interview and the guys from Kassav were there. And the journalist who actually probably had his opinion about my music and was, yes, you know, the interview was a little harsh. It was a bunch of questions of, yeah, but do you think that you are relevant? And do you think that the things you're doing will last? And do you think that... uh, what you're doing is, is, is not a, a, an affront to our culture and stuff like this. And me, I was just telling people, listen, I'm a musician and I like to invent stuff. I came from hip hop. I came in the West Indies. I listen to your music. I mix it with my hip hop. This is the result. You like it? Take it. You don't like it? Fuck you. That's all I can tell you. And at the point, the interviewer, uh, interviewer, uh, they interview Kassav. So Kassav is like the real, the real stone. For sure. Because they are the one that they invented this whole stuff. Like if you take all, whatever you do, all your investigation, you will end up to Kassav at a point. In the beginning of the 80s. So Kassav, they said, we love him. We love him because he took what we did and he gave him he gave it a new life and after that anybody who had something to say i would say listen in the bible they said my name shut up <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right but on that note i think it'll be an awesome way to end the podcast because i'm pretty sure that the experiences and knowledge that you have can go on more and more for more and more hours um, I guess. Have you been to the U.S. to do a tour or anything yet? I've been in the U.S. ten times. I start performing in the U.S. in '98 when I released my f- second album. I performed in New York in SOBs. I performed in Miami. I did Philadelphia. I did Chicago. I did uh, uh, Seattle. I did Minneapolis. All right, I'm having a Kizoma yeah. festival in July in Texas. Maybe we can try to do something because I think it would be good to have you even perform if you're coming out with a new album and things like that. But I think even to like continue to, to share your story, I think it would be pretty awesome. Yes. 
All right, brother. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for meeting. I know it's late for you. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day away from your mixing. I can't wait to hear the album. Um, if you send me some songs, I'll, I'll definitely share it with my platform, my listeners, my followers, and including in my mixes and things like that. And like you said, continue, continue to add to more pieces to the puzzle, if you will, you know? I said uh, adding stones to the pyramid. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. I'm full of signs and metaphors yes. I'm a poet I love it I used to write a little poetry myself ah uh, you see mm -hmm. I like it I like it alright brother thank you so much for your time um, we'll be in touch but once again I really appreciate you sharing your, your story with us yeah and thanks for your listeners and enjoy the dancing and the music thank you for checking out the Dance Your Heart on Fire podcast today be sure to check out neokizomba.com for links to everything that we chatted about today, as well as some awesome free resources to enhance your Kizomba journey.